What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today's video, we're going in depth, spring sight fishing. We're covering everything, glasses, baits, all the goodies. So the next time you're up shallow and you can see some fish, you can catch them. We are tucked back here in this pocket because the wind is absolutely howling. Hopefully with this wireless mic, you guys can hear me with the, with the wind, but uh, spring is upon us. Hopefully you guys uh, saw Matt's video. He did just a few videos ago. If you haven't already watched that video, uh, I'll leave a link to it right up here and down below in the video description. I want you guys to go watch that because he, he does kind of a, a brief kind of overview of sight fishing and fish uh, behavior kind of. It just kind of talks about some of the basics that I'm gonna kind of glance over and then talk about a few different things. So definitely go watch that video if you haven't already. You should just go back and watch that video just to see some of the underwater footage. Again, underwater footage is king. You can tell so much and learn so much what, about what's going on subsurface when you can get below the surface with that camera and and watch slow motion, how these fish act, their mannerisms. You know, all these fish have different personalities. We've taught this through the years. The more and more underwater footage we got, the more we got to kind of review it, play it back, slow motion, you learn that all fish are different. They all have different personalities. Some fish hate this bait. Some fish hate that bait. Some fish won't react to anything except for this bait and vice versa. It is crazy how fish uh, shut down to boat positioning and your shadow on the water, all different things you can learn. So if you haven't already, go back and watch that video first. And then today's video, I'm gonna kind of cover some of that same stuff briefly and then go kind of in a different direction, more in depth with some different things that will help you come right now springtime it is warm out it is spring water temps are in the well today they're in the 60 mid 60s these fish are halfway through their spawn but for the general part of the country you should be right with us right a little bit pre-spawn maybe some areas a little bit post-spawn uh, but you still have a couple different waves coming with the new moon phases right the new moon the full moon getting into those different moon cycles you you should have new waves of fish moving up shallow to do their uh, to do their thing now we all know that some people have uh, major issues with bed fishing uh, and today's video i'm talking about sight fishing you don't necessarily have to be bed fishing to catch fish that you see. I mean, I've pulled up to docks many, many times and saw fish under there that I skipped a, a Senko to or, or a glide bait. I mean, you can still use your eyes as you're going up shallow, using your eyes to sight fish. It doesn't necessarily have to do or have to be a bed fish, but uh, we know that it can be a controversial topic. We're not gonna debate that either way. But just know on your fishery, if you're going up shallow in the springtime right now, as those waters are in the high 50s, low to mid 60s, even if you're not visibly looking or even if you don't have water clarity good enough to see, when you're fishing that shaky head or that drop shot or that Texas rig or that glide bait, whatever bait it may be, near those isolated pieces of cover, more often than not, there's going to be bed fish throughout the shallows. So just know that. Again, we're not gonna get into the controversial side of it. With that said, if you guys are, you know, sight fishing a bed fish and you catch a giant, catch it, photograph it, weigh it, let it go. You know, get that fish back in the water as soon as possible. We want that fish to reproduce and pass those big mama genes on for future generations for our kids to catch and, and so on. So enough about that. So the first thing that I wanna talk about, Matt in his video, he talked about some baits. We're gonna talk about that here after the fact. Uh, but before we get into baits, I wanna talk about some of the, some mistakes and some of the key things you can do to overnight better or improve your sight fishing. Number one, polarized sunglasses, okay? 
polarization. It allows you to take the glare off of the water, off the road, or wherever it may be. But in this case, we're talking about sight fishing. It takes the glare off the water and allows you to see into the water, deeper into the water. Um, and they are a must, especially if you're fishing shallow and you're trying to use your eyes, you're trying to sight fish. You know, I use glasses, I wear polarized glasses 365 days out of the year. It doesn't matter if I'm driving, if I'm golfing, if I'm fishing, if I'm just hanging out at the house with the kids outside, you know, good pair of sunglasses will have UVA, UVB protection. You know, you only get one set of eyes. You wanna take care of them. So you wanna protect them with a good set of sunglasses. Uh, with that said, guys, a couple years ago, we designed our tactical line of sunglasses through Eye Surrender. Uh, a few years went into this project, picking out different lenses, different quality lenses, different lens coatings, you know, uh, hydrophobic, uh, oleophobic lens coatings to basically let the water beat up and run off and oil, no smudges on your fingertips. But most importantly, we wanted a high quality lens and a thicker lens. Basically, a lens that meets your uh, safety glass ratings, right? So we have an awesome pair of sunglasses that we designed, again, many years into the making. We went away with breakaway arms. So if you sit on them, you step on them, you crush them, uh, the arms pop off and don't break. But with that said, I don't care which set of glasses, but make sure they are polarized, okay? You have to have a polarized set of sunglasses if you want to be able to see uh, the best of your ability into the water. Now, taking it a step uh, above, different lenses, okay? Right now, I'm wearing a set of green lenses with a mirrored coating. That's why you can see the reflection. Most people, myself included, when you're sight fishing in clear water, you want to go with some kind of amber lens, okay? It's like turning on headlights in the water. It brightens everything up. So if you are a true sight fisherman, I don't care if you're bed fishing or if you're just fishing isolated pieces of cover and you're looking for that flash or you're looking for that lateral line, get yourself some good amber lens, yellow lens uh, glasses, okay? In the line, we came out with four lenses. We came out with an amber, a copper, it's kind of like a, a rose-ish color, okay? Put these guys on for you. Again, I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see. A green and a gray. I'm wearing the green right now. Let you guys take a look. A little bit darker, okay? About 20, 25% darker than the copper. But the reason that I showed you guys those, and I did a really cruddy job of showing you guys those, uh, nine times out of 10, if I'm sight fishing, I'm wearing ambers. Ooh, that is bright. It, it lights up everything around you, okay? With that said, a lot of times this time of the year, uh, as the water heats up, we kind of get like algae blooms. We get sediment in the wa water. That is when I switch over to these glasses. It still brightens everything up. Okay. But it's a little bit darker and it's more contrasty. So you can actually see deeper when there's sediment in the water. And then gr uh, green, uh, if you're fishing clear, deep water, it really... Uh, just allows you to see deeper and uh, again it's more contrasty than the than the copper and you're gonna see those dark fish those dark lateral lines maybe you're uh, in a clear water fishery with big smallmouth you're gonna see those dark um, lateral lines and those big smallmouth down deep with the darker glasses okay so enough on that that's my number one tip make sure you uh, get a good set of polarized sunglasses. Now, the reason I say good, there are lots of gas station and fly-by-night sunglass companies that do put a dark lens in a pair of sunglass frames, 
but the quality, the lens quality and the protection, the UVA, UVB is just not there. So make sure you're reading up on those tags and making sure that you're protecting your set of eyes. Like I said, you only get one pair. You wanna take care of them, okay? So sight fishing, get yourself some glasses. Number two, I laugh at this thing. At, whenever I see guys make this, I just, I just chuckle inside because uh, when I think about sight fishing, it doesn't matter if these fish are on beds or if I'm pulling up to a row of dock lines and I know that that dock over there has 30 or 40 pounds suspended under it, right? I, in my head, I think about, I kind of put myself in like a hunting mentality. Those of you guys that aren't hunters, basically you want to be quiet, you want to be sneaky, you want to be stealthy, okay? So, when I see these guys, I mean, you can tell when someone's sight fishing, they're making multiple casts at the bed over and over and over again. Usually they're, you know, setting the hook too hard. Matt talked about that a little bit briefly, a little bit in his video. Um, but what cracks me up is when these guys are dressed like it's the opening day of deer season, right? They got blaze orange sweaters on or uh, shirts on. They got a blaze orange beanie or a chartreuse beanie or just something super, super bright. Again, I approach these fish like I'm hunting. So I'm wearing, for lack of a better term, camouflage. I'm wearing something that's going to be somewhat camouflaged with the blue sky behind me, okay? I can pull my mask up. I can pull my hood over and I can be stealthy, okay? It's not the opening season day, opening day of dove season where everybody's wearing their bright orange so they don't get shot. I'm trying to sneak up on these things and be stealthy. So clothing, if you guys are gonna make a day of bed fishing or sight fishing, make sure you dress accordingly. If it's gonna be a kind of a gloomy day, obviously you can wear some grays. If it's gonna be a bright, uh, you know, bright sunny day, wear your blues and your more subtle colors. Don't wear your reds, don't wear your whites, don't wear your blaze oranges or your chartreuses, okay? I mean, you can spot someone wearing blaze orange from across the lake. You don't think that that three pound largemouth that's 15 feet away can't see you? Newsflash, you're probably in a 18, 19, 20 foot bass boat. They already know you're there. You don't need to throw up a big billboard saying, hey, look at me, I'm trying to catch you, okay? Pay attention to your clothing. That falls right into play with my third tip or my third mistake. We talked about being stealthy. I just mentioned the boat, right? Boat positioning. Don't get right up on those fish. As we get older, I notice that my eyes are getting worse and worse and worse. I used to be able to see things farther away, okay? Fight that urge to get right on top of those fish. Because like I said, those fish are kings of their domain. They know what's going on. They know that that 18 foot aluminum boat or that 20 foot skeeter isn't there day in and day out. So be stealthy as you approach. Come in slow, come in light, quiet on your trolling motor, tiptoe around if you will, drop your raptors, drop your talons, whatever it may be, quietly. I have mine on slow. I can change the raptors. I have three speeds, high, medium, and slow. I put it on slow because it just slowly drops them down, slowly brings them up. I'm not splashing in case there's multiple fish in that area, but be stealthy, okay? Don't be slamming your rod lockers. Don't be uh, whatever. You, you guys can think outside the box on that. The other thing is to take into consideration is boat placement. Two things on that. I already talked about proximity. Don't get too close. Be cognizant. Keep in mind, be mindful, the sun and your shadow. If you got a dock right here, I'm gonna say a dock with some fish suspended under it. I don't care if they're on beds or whatever, you're sight fishing them. You don't want 
your shadow moving back and forth on that dock, right? Or if there's a bed, you don't want your shadow moving back and forth around that bed. Those fish, it's going to spook them, okay? So we talked about boat positioning, we talked about shadows, we talked about being quiet. The last tip that I have for you that kind of goes in this whole little third tip or third mistake that people make, don't close off the fish to their exit route. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean, if I'm fishing, here, we got a bay right here. We have a channel swing, we have deep water access right there, and right up here we have a fish on a bed. I don't wanna put myself or my boat in between that deep water access and that fish. From what we've seen with underwater footage, as soon as that fish knows we're there and we cut off their uh, escape route, if you will, they start getting stressed out. You start seeing the gills flaring more. You start seeing the dorsal fin kind of sticking up, right? You start seeing them breathing faster and heavier. They start getting stressed out. Again, the key to this, if you're trying to be stealthy, you're trying to sneak up, don't let those fish know you're there. Make a nice entry, uh, quiet entry cast into the water and don't shut off or get in between their exit route. Okay, makes sense? So now that we kind of covered my three tips or three mistakes that people make, let's kind of switch gears and talk about baits. Uh, I do want to uh, kind of expand a little bit on what Matt was teaching because I agree with everything he said 100%, but I, he knew that I was doing a more in-depth and a more different style of video. So I wanna add to some of those things. So hopefully, like I said, you guys went, you paused this video, you went and watched that video and you saw some of that uh, awesome underwater footage. Like I said, it's so cool to see how those fish just react to the presence of you, uh, the, the different baits you present and the fish mannerisms, right? I, I talked about it a little bit ago in this video, every fish seems to have a different personality Every fish seems to react to a different bait when it comes close to the proximity of their bed. Now, with that said, we've probably all had or seen those smallmouth. Smallmouth are just crazy. In general, smallmouth are just mean. They're crazy. I don't care if their bed is 25 feet away. You flip a drop shot over here, sometimes that smallmouth will swim 25 feet over and eat your drop shot just because it's a smallmouth and just because they're mean. But for the most part, you gotta be smart, you gotta be stealthy, you gotta you know, think about all those things I talked about earlier, uh, and you can dial in your sight fishing uh, game. There is a technique to it. There is a technique to catching the larger fish. When you have a bed pair, a bed fish, a buck and a female, okay? Got a male and a female on a bed. Typically your male is smaller than your female. So when you have a three pound male, I don't know why I keep pointing back here, but when you have a three pound male and you have a, an eight pound female, how do you catch the female? We can all get lucky and flip that half ounce jig in there, shake it a few times, let it sit, and that eight pounder swims over, nose is down, you shake it a couple more times, dunk, set the hook, you have your new PB. That happens very, very rarely, okay? Very rare, rarely happens, okay? If you're trying to catch the bigger fish, there is kind of this chess game, you play with that smaller male, and that could be changing your baits, you know, going from a drop shot to a tube, to a jig, to a, a little swim bait. It could be going to a larger swim bait. You know, Matt talked about that Savage Gear, that RTF bluegill, going to a larger bluegill profile. Basically, what I've seen underwater, it is the coolest thing. Basically, that eight pounder will sit off and that male will hit all those baits you're throwing in there. 
and you're not setting the hook, right? And it's basically like that female is sitting off like, dude, are you going to do your job? Why are you getting so ticked off? What are you doing? All right, game over, my turn. She swims in, pounds that bait, right? It's this like chess game you're playing with these fish, which is so weird to even think about that you're doing that with a bass, but I've seen it happen above water, below water. Those bigger fish let that smaller male kind of do his job guarding that nest. Um, and then it's, it's, it's like a light switch. When that female feels like that, that large mouth, that male has given up or can't get that job done, she comes in and she takes over. And then it's, then it's uh, you know, the fight of hooking an eight pounder and getting them to the boat. So, baits. I don't know, did like a little karate chop there. I don't know why. Um, get, get excited. I just happy to be warm. It's nice, sun shirt, warm weather. It is windy, but uh, spring, I love spring. Everything is, all the trees are green. All the flowers are blooming. Everything's budding. It's just a great time to be out uh, chasing bass. So, baits. Matt talked about uh, his number one be uh, bait being a drop shot, and I totally agree. Okay. I like to call it a power shot. I typically throw it on a bait caster, a six foot 10 medium or medium heavy. I'm throwing braid to leader, but I'm throwing a two watt, this hook right here. This is a cover shot HD. It's by owner. A two watt, it's a straight shank hook. Okay. A little bit different hook than Matt talked about, but I, I, I'm fishing for bigger fish. I'm fishing for that eight pounder. So I am throwing 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon a little bit heavier weight and a little bit more stout of a hook. Well, no, he talked about a super line hook. So uh, basically a, a heavy wire hook because when I do hook that eight pounder or that nine pounder, or that 12 pounder, I don't want that hook bending out, okay? That is why I do throw it on a bait caster. I can't remember if Matt talked about that or not. If I'm fishing for big largemouth, that is the setup I go with. Six inch worm. If I need to, sometimes I'll bite off the head a little bit to kind of shorten that presentation. Don't want that big, I don't want a big long worm out there for them to bite a lot of the bait and not get the hook. Again, you're playing this chess game, chess match with these, with these fish. When they, when you finally get them fired up enough to come in and eat that bait, you want to make sure that when you stick them that you have a good hook behind it. Okay. So that cover shot HD, it's a straight shank hook. That is my favorite for power shop shotting or drop shotting on heavier tackle. With that said, if I'm fishing deeper, clearer water for smallmouth and spotted bass, I still go with that mosquito light uh, exposed hook. You can see how this guy right here is Texposed. It's Texas rig with the hook just kind of sticking out of the back. Great around grass, great around wood, great around dock pilings. But again, deep, clearer water. I'm talking 10, 12, 15, 20 feet sight fishing. I'm going with an exposed hook and a little bit longer leader for my drop shot. Again, on my drop shot, I'm going with all these baits, I'm going with a heavier head. I want that bait to hit and stay in that zone. You know, maybe you're up on the St. Lawrence and you're fishing spawning smallmouth in 20 foot with, I mean, 20 foot visibility and you're fishing 15, 20 feet down, you got current, you want to get that bait out there down and you don't want it to fly by, right? You want to stay in that zone so you can play with your, your drop shot weights, but all of these baits, doesn't matter if it's a Ned rig or a jig, I'm going a little bit heavier head so that bait can sit there in that area, that defensible zone area and I can work that bait and get those fish fired up. So that was the drop shot. Talked about those baits. Obviously the Smalley Smasher, um, the, the, uh, the Bomb Shot, they're all great baits. So we'll link all that stuff down below in the video description. But I wanted to add that key piece on, the, on that hook and uh, the bait caster deal because I love fishing for larger fish on that bait caster. Especially, I mean, when you're making multiple casts to these fish, it's so much easier just to 
do this, flip it out there, reel it in, flip it out there. You're not having to flip the bale, grab the line, do all that stuff. It just allows you to work quicker and, uh, and it's easier for me. Now with that said, I talked about multiple casts. If you are a guy that is sight fishing on beds, I already talked about how fish react to different baits. This fish might hate the, hate the jig. This fish might not care, couldn't care less about a jig, but hates the drop shot. Either way, try to find the spot on spot in that area. There's gonna be a spot that is more, that is like the zone. If you get anywhere near it, that's what fires those fish up and it's what fires those big females up. So pay attention to the area they're fishing and see if you can find that spot in that area. Another little tip for you. Okay, Ned Rig. I know Matt talked about a Ned Rig. Awesome bait, exposed hook. Uh, this TRD, high float. A tip for you guys. It kind of goes hand in hand with um, getting the boat too close because you want to see. You know, guys are making custom brackets to sit up three feet, four feet higher on their boat, or they're making custom brackets to stand on their graphs or on the top of their trolling motor. They're trying to get every advantage to see farther back. If you're that guy and you need to do a, something a little bit different to add some visibility to your bait, again, in Matt's video, he explained how uh, he and I both like sight fishing with natural looking baits. We're not throwing a lot of bright whites or bright chartreuses or anything like that. You know, sometimes you can get, if, if they're unpressured fish, you can get away with that. But from, for the most part, we like the green pumpkins, the go-to colors, the watermelons, that sort of thing. But if you need a little tip, a little bit of visibility on your Ned rigs, go with a little chartreuse head. Two things. One, you'll be able to see it a lot farther away. It'll help you with that. And the other thing, a lot of times bed fishing, these fish aren't trying to eat the bait. They're just trying to pick it up and move it. So that is why I don't like a real big Texas rig presentation. It gives them a lot of bait to grab without getting the hook. But when you put the brightest part on the head of the hook, that's the target. That is what those fish eat. So little tip for you, kind of best of both worlds. You can still go natural. You can, uh, you can see the bait a little bit farther out, but it gives them a target on that Ned rig to eat that head and get the hook. What else? Little, little, little Ned rig I showed, or uh, I rigged up for you guys. Again, that's the TRD Cross paired up with a little chartreuse head. Again, just something that helps you be able to visibly see that bait out there farther away from the boat. I talked about it briefly. If I'm Texas rigging a creature bait, usually I'm throwing, just like Matt, I'm throwing some kind of jig. Okay, some kind of jig. Smaller profile, if I can get away with it. Sometimes those bigger females like a bigger jig. Um, so I'm going with something just like Matt. Half ounce, half ounce jig, typically paired up with a beaver style bait, something that doesn't have a lot of action in the, the, flat, in, in, in the appendages, the claws, if you will. If I know, I usually have both tied up. I have one that has kind of that dead action, not a lot of action in the appendages. And then on the flip side, I have like a, a paca from net bait, a paca craw, or um, I don't know, something like a rage tail, something like that, a trailer that has a lot of movement, kind of that one, two punch. Again, you're trying to figure out what style of bait is this fish going to react to. That's this guy right here. Did I grab that bag? Yeah. That's that pocket slim. That's a four inch. I went ahead and cut a little bit off of the, the, the body of the bait to kind of shorten that presentation down. But again, you're gonna have a lot more movement in those tentacles. Uh, it gets those fish fired up. Sometimes it can be too much. That's when I'll go kind of like that one, two punch with the beaver 
or that guy right there. And then if I really need to, I'll downsize. This is the little missile jigs. That's the, this is the little micro football. And I have that paired up with a little tiny pocket chunk. How cool is that little presentation? Here is, here's the Ned rig with the TRD. So football, heavier jig, heavier head. If you're fishing that deep moving water, I'll go with that heavier head to keep that bait down there in that strike zone uh, longer. Again, you can go with the TRD bugs or the craws to get kind of that high float presentation, but uh, keep it fairly simple. Again, if I can get away with that smaller compact profile jig, that's what I'll do. I'll trim the skirt down a little bit. I'll trim the weed guard down a little bit because I want those fish to have to eat the bait even though they're not trying to put the whole thing in their mouth. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I brought this too. I want to talk about this real quickly. Again, I talked about it a lot in the beginning of this video. Sight fishing. You're not necessarily bed fishing. You're skip, you see those dark subs just sitting underneath that dock, right? You want to skip this bait up there. You want to lead them. Um, a wacky rig stick bait is in my boat or on my person at all times, anytime I'm fishing this time of the year. A wacky rib, rig Senko um, just has a special place. It's ultra finesse, it's quiet. You can get up there, you can make a long skip and that thing just slowly floats down. You'll watch that dark, that shadow under that dock as that bait falls down, you're letting it fall on slack line, no resistance. And you'll just see that dark shadow just disappear out of sight. You're sitting there watching your slack line and you'll see it dunk. So much fun. So a weightless Senko, I'm gonna add that to the arsenal. I know Matt talked about some things, wanted to add that to it. Talked about the Savage Gear RTF, ready to fish bluegill. Another great bluegill to fish if you are uh, bed fishing. If you are targeting those fish, defending those beds, obviously, bass hate bluegill. That sleeper gill is an awesome, awesome bait. And then the dark sleeper. I've caught fish up to almost nine pounds on that, sight fishing them with the dark sleeper. It's a little bit heavier bait. You can keep it down on bottom. It's got kind of that, I don't know, sloped flat head. So you can get that thing down there and just creep it along. That little tail kicks and those fish hate anything being around that zone. Now, last but not least, talked about Texas rigs a little bit in Matt's video. I wanted to add one uh, bait that I really like to throw and that's this guy right here. This is the X zone adrenaline craw and this is the junior, okay? Three and a half inch profile. Real small, real compact, but if you're on one of those one of those sight fish that won't react to the Ned rig, won't react to uh, a bigger jig, try throwing this guy down there. It has a ton of swimming action. You can hop it up, let it fall, hop it up, let it fall, and it just really, really ticks off those fish. So if you're if you're hurting to catch a fish, you need that fifth, fifth fish for your limit, to fill out your, your bag for your tournament, something like that, give that uh, Adrenaline Cross Junior Try that out, try it. it, it works well. I've caught a ton of fish on it. Has some great action, either rigged on a, a Texas rig, even a shaky head. Heck, you could Carolina rig it. That doesn't really apply to this video, but it's a, it, it's a bait that works in many, many different scenarios and fished as a different, many, many different techniques. All right, what else do we got? Um, I got these baits. I think that's it guys uh you know matt talked about that six inch worm that's what i like to throw in the drop shot or the shaky head i tend to like throwing a drop shot or a power shot i got one rigged up over here uh better than a shaky head this time of the year if i'm sight fishing you know i i can suspend that bait 
in that fish's face. Again, you're going with that shorter leader, but you can suspend that bait in that fish's face, whereas the shaky head is down on bottom. And uh, I just tend to have better looks, luck suspending that bait in that fish's face. But guys, there it is, sight fishing in a nutshell. Be cognizant of your boat positioning, your shadow, the clothing you're wearing, the glasses that you're wearing, uh, your sound, the baits you're fishing. Hopefully that helps you guys. And hopefully next time you're out, you know, walking the shoreline or you're out on the boat sight fishing, these tips will come into, you know, to, you'll remember them and they'll, they'll help you catch that possible fish of a lifetime that you see suspended up underneath that dock or on the bed. Hopefully these, these tips help you guys out. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. Try to get to those as soon as possible. And uh, just like every video, we'll link all the different products we talked about down below in the description, the video description, so you guys can click on them, check them out. But guys, that's it. Spring is upon us, warm weather's upon us, fish are moving shallow. It's time to put on your polarized sunglasses and go sight fishing. Guys, if you have any questions, like I said, leave those below. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video. video.